welcome to Clear Vision Psychotherapy, the channel where you can find lots of psychology videos uh, which address uh, many of the things that um, life can throw our way. Hopefully you can find something here of use. My name is Simon, I'm a psychotherapist and the content here is based on my experience as a psychotherapist and also my own personal life experience as well. What I wanted to talk about today was finding yourself, about finding yourself in a relationship with a narcissist and discerning whether you're actually in an abusive relationship or not because it might sound obvious to some people but actually once you're in it um, it's sometimes it's very difficult to see what's going on and we can make lots of excuses for the other person because emotions are involved so I wanted to clear up some things uh, highlight some kind of dynamics which you may want to if you're watching this um, and experiencing this you may want to actually analyze a little bit further so if you are <clears throat> Finding yourself in a relationship with a complete narcissist is finding, well, let's put it this way. There are people with heavy narcissistic traits and there are a lot of narcissists out there, but a full-blown narcissist, you're, that's really going to hit you. And they're quite few and far between. Um, but there are people with heavy narcissistic traits or sociopathic traits. Yes, of course. And this is kind of what it's geared towards. So, <clears throat> because again, narcissist is a term that seems to be thrown around a lot, uh, quite easily. It's another one like depression, it's just kind of thrown around a lot and actually it's a little bit more complex than just a single word. Um, so we all have narcissistic traits to varying degrees. That's kind of what gets people doing the things that they do. That's what, um, I don't know, that, that, how do you put it uh, that's what will get you to push yourself forward for that promotion at work that's a healthy narcissism um, I am good at this I think I should have a pay rise I think I should have I think I deserve one I, uh, um, I'm I don't know a great parent or whatever it is because I do X Y and Z there's nothing wrong with a bit of healthy narcissism because it gets us out of bed in the morning and it gets us motivated but narcissism can go too far and then it can be abusive to the other person, especially if we're in a relationship with it. There's a couple of things we have to remember. A narcissist is actually a very, very fragile person. And I can hear a lot of you going, what? That doesn't make sense. The way a narcissist is created comes from two different, way, different approaches from the parents, but it, it equals the same thing. So. If you are a child and you come from a family where you are fully neglected, let's say maybe you're, it's a one-parent family, two-parent family, it doesn't matter, uh, there is no positive message uh, of your self-concept towards you as a child. So you are shit, you're ugly, you're this, you're that, you're the other, you're useless, you should never have been born, but etc, 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 and you're left to your own devices and there's no one else in that world in your environment who's going to give you a positive message you chances are you're going you're going to go one of two ways either extremely depressive as you grow up and suicidal or you're going to become a narcissist um, and you are going to give yourself your own affirming messages i'm i'm wonderful i'm amazing uh i'm, I'm, oh, I'm better than everybody else because the opposite of that is to agree with the messages that you were given as that child so that's one way that a narcissist is created their self-concept then the self-concept of that is like a fragile shell and the the more that fragile shell is reinforced um, it's still fragile it's brittle but the more it gets reinforced as life goes on the further away the edge of the shell is from the true uh, inner child in that and I'm talking you know as an adult there's there is a lost vulnerable uh, scared child inside of that <coughs> inside of that ex ex huge shell the other way a narcissist is created uh, is if you have parents or a parent that is uh, um, uh, 
gives you gives the child affirmations uh, which are not true they're not congruent to reality so you're amazing oh wow you're the best you're this you're that you're the other now there's a healthy level of this and yet so children do need to hear positive stuff but if it's over the top and especially if the no one else can give a realistic viewpoint or perhaps you have, um, you know, one parent will not allow the other parent to chastise the child or tell the child off or, or anything like that. Or maybe one parent actually berates the other parent in front of that child, in defense of that child. And that's another way, And it, it, so this is the other way that a narcissist is created. And again, the self-concept, you could liken it to this, in, in the neglected child, uh, 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 instant instance the child has created the child has created their own false self-concept in the other scenario the child has been given their false con self-concept either way the result is the same inside is a very very small vulnerable child and on the outside is an extremely disagreeable narcissist probably not a very nice person so one thing to remember when dealing with a narcissist is if that you come at them head on and they perceive you as a threat and this is an unconscious perception if they, they unconsciously perceive you as a threat to their self-concept that they have developed they will do everything they can to destroy you and I, I use this kind of like colorful language this poetic language but they will try to annihilate you destroy you um, discredit you in any way they can because you're threatening their very very brittle vulnerable self-concept so if you find yourself perhaps at work or in a relationship some a romantic relationship with a narcissist and you're about to go you know what actually you're blah, 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 and you're not very uh, they will come at you with rage and this is called narcissistic rage so if you're in this relationship and you find yourself you, you perhaps say, hey, you know what? That wasn't so great what you did there. And I don't mean this, this um, let's get, think of a scenario. Um, <clears throat> I, I don't know, uh, perhaps, perhaps it could be something that they're trying to achieve. And you're like, yeah, if you, with a little bit more practice, you, you're gonna get better. And they boof, come at you with rage. Or you give them some kind of judgment or critical feedback on their actual character in a negative light or an area of improvement which should more come from like a workplace they are going to hit you with everything they've got that is the first warning the first not the first one but that is a good warning a good indicator and that reaction that narcissistic rage is a good indicator they are involved with a narcissist um and of course it can be pushed to one side it can be like oh, maybe they're just having a bad day maybe they were tired maybe this maybe that maybe the other and you can make excuses for them um what else will the what, what else is a indicator of being in a relationship with a narcissist being given word salad um being confused feeling if you are one golden rule i, I have and I, I i offer forward to clients is if you're feeling confused about something that you really think you shouldn't be confused about, then chances are there's some kind of manipulation that's gone on. Um, and that's not to say in every case, but it's, and that's not to say in every case, but it's definitely worth looking at. So, if I am um, in some kind of situation, and I'm like, actually, I, I, I'm telling myself, yeah, this is uh, X, Y, and Z. And someone's trying to tell me it's uh, AF and uh, uh, AF and K. I feel confused because actually I thought, and especially if you become confused with reality as well. So if it's like, well, no, actually you said this and then this, and then you went out the door and then you came back, and they go, no, 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 blah, 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 and you get completely confused, and they're like, no, you got this wrong, and that didn't happen, and this didn't happen, and this dynamic these conversations begin to mount up they begin to become more frequent they begin to escalate and you begin to feel more confused chances are you're actually not confused you're seeing reality for what it is you're being told and manipulated into thinking you've got it wrong is and this is another 
this is another potential indicator that you are in deep with a narcissist you are you and you need to put some boundaries in or leave i mean the best thing to do with an abusive narcissist is to tell them that they're right and then to leave um but that's not always easy so we've got word salad um it's what and nos indications of narcissistic rage where you've threatened their self-concept somehow through some kind of feedback or criticism or whatever it is that you've given them and they come back with this huge amount of rage and the other one is you're questioning them about something or questioning about something that happens they like, oh on Friday night you were in we were in the bar and you were talking to and, and blah, 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 I wasn't very comfortable with it. and they're like no 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 you got it wrong I have known it to go as extreme as in into extremes of where the narcissist or the abuser will also um, move things in the house you know move objects you know, smash things um, very very discreetly and then blame it on the other person blame it on the partner or blame it on something else that's even more confusing and the partner is often left going well, I'm sure he, heard this and you weren't in the room oh, I, no, I'm sitting right down next to you what are you going on about and you're going oh, they were so uh, the confusion the word salad is often the one or the actual physical things moving around that kind of confusion um, if you find yourself your friends or your family or your network gradually edging either edging away from you or you're edging away from them often with the subtle encouragement of your narcissistic partner this again and you you probably won't chances are you won't see this but again it's another indication that you are involved and in quite deep with a narcissist they will pull you away from your support network because what does your support network potent have the potential to do it has the potential to uncover the truth it has the potential to save you and it has the potential to damage their own self-concept which we go right back to the beginning how a narcissist is kind of created they avoid anywhere where there could be damage to their self-concept it's too that it, that would absolutely destroy them so you know for a healthy kind of self-regulating person who's growing and embracing and willing to listen to others you know if someone gives us some critical feedback or some something about ourself uh, some kind of concept of ourselves which we maybe not too we didn't really want to hear oh that hurts a bit you know I didn't realize there's a bit of a selfish asshole or whatever um, we generally can handle it quite well a narcissist won't doesn't mean that but if someone can't doesn't mean that they're not they are oh they're definitely a narcissist because they they clearly couldn't handle it it's when they come back with the rage that's the indication. If someone comes back quite meek and mild and goes, really, or oh, I'm a bit upset, you said this, and I just can't believe it. But chances are they're not a narcissist. If someone comes back raging about what you said, then they could well be. Uh, as long as what you said was quite reasonable. Um, excuse me, it's a little bit chilly up here. Uh, so those are two, two, two indicators that you are in a relationship with a narcissist. Uh, and, and then the third uh, indicator is you're being isolated away from your support network, from family and friends. This can often lead to uh, some quite severe abuse, sometimes even violent abuse, um, pulling, but pulling you absolute, absolutely away from your network. Um, I'll give you one more, because there are quite a lot, but one more would be... One more would be that you um, uh, no longer do the things that you used to do. Everything you, in fact, you you kind of lose a lot of your zest for life, and it's not an apathy. It's this that you feel pretty browbeaten down, and you don't want to do much, and you don't feel motivated. Once that starts happening, the narcissist will do one of two things: they will either ramp up their abuse to kind of like finally finish you off or they will discard you ultimately it's going to lead to you being discarded which is probably the best thing that can happen to you because then other people can help you heal yourself and help you uh, recover but they will eventually discard you it leads to being stripped of everything that you are without you realizing you were being stripped of it and then 
they discard you because they need a narcissistic fuel supply. They need someone looking up to them. They need someone singing their praises. They need someone thinking they're amazing, which is why they become, or why being involved, often we realize too late when we're involved with a narcissist because they seem amazing and wonderful and so forward and so nice and they flatter us and they do all of this stuff right at the beginning of the relationship and they do this because they want it back and then once you learn to give it back then they stop giving it to you and then you keep doing it to them and then they wear you down and then you chuck some questions in like oh hang on and then they give you word salad or you chuck a big question in and they give you narcissistic rage uh, and they begin to isolate you away from people, away from your network, because then you can't check against reality. Because then no one else is looking in. No one else can potentially say, uh, hold on a minute. So they're isolating you away and they literally do drain your very lifeblood away from you if given the chance. And then discard you. Um, one final indicator would be, um, and it's kind of after the narcissistic rage or after you've criticized them, uh, they would send the, um, I can't remember what they're called in Greek mythology, but they send the flying monkeys in um, to get you. So they try to turn people against you. And often people will. Uh, this is more kind of in the workplace, but it can happen in relationships as well. I've known it where uh, romantic partners have a actually convinced the family of their partner that their um, how do I put this that makes it easy to understand so uh, the narcissist will befriend and uh, charm and bewitch if you like the family of their partner so the partner is even more isolated away. Um, so that's not a case of like geographically removing them or falling out. We, we'll fall, you know, we'll fall out, but it's just you and me against uh, your family. We're, we're a network. This is one step on from that. I'm going to embrace your network, make your network love me, which means your network will think you're crazy if you say anything. Um, this takes a lot of undoing, um, a long time to undo. But this can be to the point of uh, where the family members of the uh, victim of the narcissist cannot see it. They cannot see it. And they will begin to persecute as well. I've even known it where narcissists have claimed to have been violently transgressed by their partner but with no um, proof of injury, no physical injury, no evidence of injury, and the family to act, the family of said partner to actually believe it. And then when confronted with the truth of, but there are no injuries, there is no visit to the doctors, there's no visit to a hospital, there's nothing to substantiate their claims. The family members kind of go, oh, oh, hang on a minute. Um, when because the, the kind of the, the, the glitters in the eyes the, the sparkles are in the eyes um, it's nobody's fault apart from the narcissist but it, it's, it's it's very easily it's a very easy way to uh, it, it happens very very subtly very slowly and many of us can become uh, entranced or bewitched by uh, such dynamics and before we know it We've absolutely embraced that person and haven't realized they're actually they're actually manipulating us it's a manipulation we have to remember this all the time narcissists manipulate they manipulate in order to control and get what they want and to look good uh, so these are some things to watch out for if you uh, are experiencing any of these that it can be indicators that you are in deep with a narcissist and you may want to consider getting out and of course what the another one would be uh, uh, the, another indicator would be all the self-doubt when faced with all of this when faced with all of this knowledge that hey yeah i've i've they've given me word salad they're giving me narcissistic rage they've isolated me away from family or friends 
one way or the other um, somehow I'm on my own in this but so, you know I think I can just if I just do this or if I do that or maybe it's my fault and that is the ultimate indicator when you are making apologies for them <clears throat> changing your life for them once you've reached that stage it's very very hard to pull away but that is absolutely the point where you really really need to pull away um so i hope that helps it's a bit stark but um it it, it does happen um and uh, more than we know uh more than we think sorry uh but i hope that helps and if you're experiencing some of this and again everyone can give a bit of word salad you know we get caught out in a lie perhaps we did something or perhaps we had one too many drinks with our friends we get back and we give a bit of word salad that's something very different um we can lie to get out of trouble we can come across angry because we've we've been hurt by something the so it's it's important to distinguish or to learn to distinguish if it keeps happening generally you're probably in trouble you're you're probably dealing with a narcissist if it's a one-off or it happens very very occasionally but nothing else happens maybe your partner has an issue with something that they maybe need support with that they maybe need support with not necessarily makes them a narcissist like i said right at the beginning of the video it's, it's a label that's thrown around very very easily and needs to be addressed so these things need to be in combination and need to be happening quite frequently and also the intensity of them needs to have increased so if the word salad starts off quite small and gradually gets each time it happens it's a bit more intense a bit more intense you know the the rage starts off as slightly annoyed to full-blown rage there's a progression route there's an escalation then you're looking at abuse then you're looking at um uh, you're involved with a narcissist then you're then you need to really 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 begin to protect yourself because you are very vulnerable at this point uh like i said i hope that helps uh if you like what you heard and saw please like and subscribe leave any feedback in the comments section and i'll see you next time until then please take care of yourselves